Hey, handsome. This is gonna be a long night, but these shots are turning out great. I guess you're gonna need that coffee then. I'll go put it on. It's true what they say about the fall and the sudden stop at the end. This was a late goodbye. Thirteen years after I'd gotten We're my... done here. If the pain gets any worse or you experience any other symptoms, you should come see me. I'll let you get on with it then. Sarah, uh, Sheriff Breaker, is waiting for you. She's very good at her job. I'm sure she can locate your wife in no time. Thank you for testing the lights, Miss Weaver. Everything seems to be fine. I don't have the luxury of being complacent, Deputy Grant. The bulbs will need changing soon. Alice looked through the viewfinder, lining up the shot. Cauldron Lake was breathtaking. Something caught her eye. Cops, you're gonna meet me in Elderwood National Park. There's a spot called Lover's Peak. Midnight. Mr. Wade, Don't can I help you with anything? Pal. For watching you. I need to get some air. The sheriff said I could go out back. Of course, hey, Mr. Wake. Hey, you can Mr. The cell hey, can you turn the light? The light's on. The deputies, they won't, they don't understand. In spite of its human mask, to describe the dark presence as intelligent would have implied you, human quality. Can you help me? Can you the early morning light hurt my eyes and made my head ache. The man on the phone had said, go through the fence on the left. Well, folks, it's been another long night, and uh, it's about time for me to sign off for a while. God knows I need my beauty sleep. <laughs> uh, just one more item before I go. It's been a busy night for the sheriff's department. We've had a few broken windows, even a report of shots fired on Main Street. Deputies Mulligan and Thornton had to deal with two intoxicated young men who were celebrating the completion of their deer fest float. Now, folks, we get this every year. I know it's exciting, the big day's almost here, but let's save it for the party and leave the gunplay for the shooting competition, huh? There's no point in getting all worked up yet. The kidnapper fired his gun one last time, and the shadow vanished into the darkness it had come from. See? Nothing to it, Wake. The thought of Alice in his hands was revolting. Seriously, Al, what you were saying in the car, just listen to yourself. What, you shot a guy and his body just disappeared? Just be careful with the natives, Al. These yokels are dangerous. Everybody hates a tourist, or it'll be deliverance all over again. Archie! Barry had never gotten along with Alice, but he knew Alan loved her with an almost frightening... I knew I should have gone to the cops. This wasn't the smartest thing I'd ever done, but I was still angry with Barry for trying to talk me out of it. 
These people had called me right in the sheriff's station. The cops wouldn't scare them, and they had Alice. Welcome back to the show, folks. As promised, our very own Dr. Nelson has just parked his rear end in the studio. Doc, what's your deer fest plan like? My plan? You make it sound a lot more organized than I ever seek to manage. <laughs> oh. Oh. No plan, really. Just taking the atmosphere. I'm getting a little too rickety to do much more than that, you know. Oh, tell me about it. No sack race for us older gentlemen, huh? <laughs> yes, exactly that. But I'm gonna check out the parade, of course. And I'll be one of the pie contest judges, too. <laughs> uh, well, that takes a different kind of constitution. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's my kind of exercise. Now, Doc, seriously, you're in pretty good shape, though. You're the outdoors type. I, I know for a fact you're an avid fisherman. That's right. Matter of fact, just caught a heck of a largemouth bass early this morning. But you're not taking part in the fishing contest? No, no, not this year. Um, see, Pat, I'm just not that competitive anymore. Now I just like to take my time and enjoy the peace of it. It's no fun if I need to worry about what I'm catching, you know? Well, considering your track record, the participants are probably pretty happy you feel that way. <laughs> well, Pat, that's kind of you to say. from the arresting officer's report here. Assault the victim's head area repeatedly with the weapon of choice being a pair of bare fists. Wow, that sentence really flows, huh? Maybe you're not the literary type. Okay, so you mess him up. But why? Who was that guy? We couldn't ID him. Why would a guy like you do him like that? I didn't like his face? Well, you must have hated it, because you really went to town there. I mean, there's no way to tell what he looked like. No ID on him, either. That must be difficult. But then we ran the fingerprints. Got a match. Your prints. Identical. Huh. How about that? Your son said you were wearing a white shirt when you took him to the game. But the white shirt is on the dead guy. It's plenty red now. I won't get away with this. Do you really think that's in any way relevant to me? I had plenty of time to talk to my boy before the cops arrived, you know? He won't stop screaming, am I right? You think he's ever gonna be okay? <laughs> I left my mark. Believe me. You, you bastard. What? You gonna shoot me? What's the point? I'm going to prison. You got me. I... I don't understand any of this. And you never will. Maybe you'll see me again, Agent. Maybe in the mirror.
Rose knew that Rusty was in love with her, and she liked him too. She liked him a lot. center was heavy with an awful smell, as if some rotten drowned thing had crawled up from its grave. Rusty kept coughing blood. The vision left me weak. This was no head injury. No! sure that Rusty was safe was to get the power running and the lights back on. At the last instant, I changed direction and threw myself down. The axe splintered the trunk of a tree. In that last instant of consciousness, Rusty thought about Rose. He was older than she was. Lover's Peak was at the far end of the nature trail. Nobody in Bright Falls seemed to know where Al was, but Rose, the waitress at the diner, had seen him. From what Mary
I turned the corner, afraid of what the flashlight's beam might reveal. Suddenly, a roughly painted symbol of a torch glowed. Agent Nightingale didn't want to be in Bright Falls. These little communities revolted him, and he didn't like the trees or the gold. You can see them too? Hell, of course I see them. Come on, we gotta move. Why? <laughs> because that's the way the story goes. Yeah, but... Let's move! I lost my gun back there. Get ready. They'll be on us soon. You're gonna give me the manuscript or you'll be sorry. No! Come back here! I swear I'll kill you if you hurt Alice! Do you hear me? Come back here! He had Alice, and he wanted the manuscript because he thought it held some magical power. But I had no manuscript. On more than one occasion, Alice had tried to explain to me how it felt to be afraid of the dark. Sarah didn't care about the legal threats Wake's agent had made. She let Wake go without argument, because there was something about him she couldn't quite put it. The night had been one desperate situation after another. I was exhausted.
The logging site was a mess. The modular office had been pushed off the cliff. Deputy Thornton climbed up from the wreckage excited. Barry saw the darkness attack the visitor center. It made him a believer. The men Al said he'd shot, they hadn't been shot. Shadow stirred and the wind picked up as I ran through the forest. I felt the dark presence turning its gaze toward me. Then the moonlight was blown. I'll be there soon. Just make sure you keep the lights on. I still had to reach Barry at the cabin, but at least I was out of the woods. FBI agent's command froze me in place. I considered surrender. It was a
There was no misunderstanding. Cauldron Lake was where Alice and I... Barry had talked about birds over the phone. 